Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Lift up Jesus, he is King of kings. Lift up Jesus, he is Lord of lords. Lift up Jesus, he is King of kings, King of King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah, lift up Jesus here, he is King, he is King of kings, lift up Jesus, he is Lord of lords, I say lift up Jesus, he is King of kings, King of kings, and Lord of lords. O oh Lord, my God, how excellent is your name in all, in all the, the earth, how excellent. O oh Lord, my God, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, my, my God, how excellent is your name in all the, the earth, how excellent is your name. Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high God. Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, Jare, you are the most Oh, Jehovah, Nisi. El ancient of days, you are the most high. Oh, Jehovah, you are the most high. Oh, Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most Oh, Jehovah, Elohim, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high God. Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are. The most high God. Let's lift up our voices and begin to worship the King of Kings. Let's begin to give him praise this morning, wherever you are this, this evening. Let's begin to thank him. Let's begin to worship him. Father, we give you all the praise, all glory, all honor, adoration. Be lifted high up, our Father. Be lifted high up, King of kings. Be lifted high up, the everlasting God. Be lifted high up, the God that covers and protects his children. Be lifted high up, the God of heaven. We worship you, Lord. Thank you for your great mercy. Thank you for protection. Thank you for seeing us throughout all the trials, troubles, and pestilence that we have passed through. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor and adoration. Who is like unto you? Amongst all the gods, there is none like you. You are glorious in holiness. You are fearful in praises, doing wonders. So we thank you. We bless your name. We worship you. Receive all glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Brethren, we have come today to pray. The Lord cannot answer the prayers of sinners, as it is said in his word in Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 and 2. It's not, his hands is not shut that he cannot help. 
but our sins have separated him, have made him not to answer us. Let's lift up our voices this moment. Please present yourself before the Almighty God, just as you are, and tell him about yourself. Wherever we have sinned, ask him for mercy, because he cannot answer us with our sins. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Everlasting Father, Lord Jehovah, as we come before you this moment, Lord, we ask for your mercy, we ask for your forgiveness, Lord Jehovah, we pray from this moment, wherever we have gone wrong, wherever we have made mistakes, wherever we have sinned against you, Father, we plead for mercy, we ask that you will forgive all our, your children, forgive me, oh God, forgive us, wherever we have sinned. In any way, the sins that we don't even know, the sins that is, we want to stand against us tonight. Father, we plead, Lord, look into our heart, Lord, and forgive us and cleanse us. Let that blood of Jesus that was shared on the cross of Calvary, in which we are coming under this covered covering, let it not be in vain, because we are believing in you that Jesus Christ died and he resurrected on the third day that we ourselves will be delivered. He suffered, he fell down, he was nailed to the cross because of us. So today we come under that covering and we plead that Lord we accept him. We refrain from our sins. We decide from this moment, Lord, no more sin. We want to be attached to you. Please, Lord, forgive us. Accept us so that our prayers will be answered. And as we are repenting today, we are making up our minds uh, that we are not going back. We remain firm with you. That day we thank you. We bless your name. We worship you. Receive all glory and honor and adoration. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. So, my Father, I stand as your servant tonight representing you here to pray and to call upon the name of the Lord that Lord as we jointly together speak the word that you have given to us to declare today we ask Lord that you will answer us speedily in the mighty name of Jesus Father, your word that knows no distance, there is nothing like a barrier that can stop your word from going far. So many people are seated and st in their hopes right now, expecting an answer to their prayer. Lord, as we go ahead, let the mountain that covers Zion, let Mount Zion that covers his children, that covers Jerusalem, let it cover protect, shield, and deliver us all today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, as we continue, Holy Spirit, just take over. We surrender all to you. We have no power. We walk according to the directive of your power. So tonight, Holy Spirit, take over. Speak to us. Deliver. Show us mercy. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Tonight we have come to pray. And I know that the God that answered by fire, he will answer us tonight Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So I want you tonight to get yourselves ready. Brethren, prayer is is communicating with God, is talking to your father one-on-one. -on -one. And as you are talking, you are listening to him and hearing what he will say. Our God is not a wicked God. As long as we make up our minds to surrender to him, to refrain from our evil ways, he is ready to answer us. Tonight, we are going to pray. And to start off, we are going to look into the scriptures from Psalm 125. Go read from verse, just read verses 1 and 2. Psalm 125, 
verses 1 and 2. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I know that you are here tonight with us. Your children are all over, in different locations, all over the world, listening to us right now. Father, please, let there be a miracle tonight. Let there be a testimony tonight. Lord, those who are seated and believe and trust in you, please, Father, do the miraculous tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 The Bible says in Psalm 125 from verses 1 and 2, it says, They that trust in the Lord shall be, shall be, I want you to follow every word that is in the scriptures, every word that God speaks to us. He said, They that trust in the Lord shall be as will be as mount zion <laughs> mount zion and why because it went to further to say which cannot be removed but abided forever kabarud shendo ya kapa is anyone that trust in god will definitely be as Mount Zion. And Mount Zion can never be removed. It remains there forever. And then look at what verse 2 says. It said, as the mountain, and which mountain? This Mount Zion, as the mountain surrounds, is round about Jerusalem, he said, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth ever, even forever. Now, the question now is in this verse too. He said, the mountain as it surrounds Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people. Who are the people of God? Because here God is talking about protecting his people. Who are the people of God? We can find that in that verse 1. They that trust in the Lord. They that believe in the Lord. They that put their security and their hope and everything in the Lord. Those who have made up their minds that I am no more in the camp of the devil. I am no more ready to obey Satan. I am ready to obey God, to follow him, to do whatever he says. Those are the people of God. Now, if you trust, if you put your trust on someone, it means you believe in that person with all your heart, and that he, you also believe that that person can help you. And that is why you put a trust in him. And once you trust in anybody, the person will always be boasting of you. He will always talk about you. Just like Job trusted in God. Even when the wife said, Job, curse God and die. Job said, no woman, I trust in my father that he can do greater things. I pray for somebody today, as you put your trust in this God, tonight, whatever you have lost, whatever you thought has gone, God will replace it. God will restore it in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. If you believe that word, I want you to say amen to it. Mm -hmm. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So today's prayer will only work for those who believe. If you don't believe, then the prayer cannot work. I have seen God doing so many things. I've seen God doing miraculous things in, in the lives of many. And as such, before we go in into the real deeper prayer, paraventure, there are some of you there. That is the first thing we are going to do now. Paraventure, there are some of you, the which they may be, 
in one way or the other, you are not connected or attached to Jesus or attached to this God we want to talk to tonight, you have a great opportunity to surrender and be attached to him tonight. Just like David did in Psalm 51. Psalm 51, David said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, brought out my transgression. David knew that he has sinned against God. David knew that he has committed adultery against God. He cried to God and said, have mercy. He said, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. He knew that he has sinned and he told God, please cleanse me from this sin. He, how do I know? He said, for I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. It is one thing for you to sin. It is one thing for you to cry. It is another thing for you to acknowledge that you have actually sinned. David confessed his sin to God and told God, I acknowledge that I have sinned. Oh, the reason you have to pray this prayer is very important. Is, is, is a re the reason you have to pray this prayer is because in Isaiah chapter 59, Isaiah chapter 59, when you read from verses 1 to 3, it says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. God is not wicked, or his hands is shortened, or his hands cannot stretch forth and help you. He said, Neither his ears heavy. He can hear you. But in verse 2, it now tells you the reason. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. The iniquity becomes a barrier. It becomes an insulator that no matter what you do, you cannot be connected to God. He said that it has separated you be between you and your God and your sins have hid his face. So when once you commit sin, just like Jesus carried our sins on the, to the cross of Calvary and God turned his back on him and he did not want to look. God cannot behold sin. In as much that as God could not behold a sin, your sin, I my sin, that Jesus carried, he cannot behold you carrying a sin again. He cannot look at your face. He said because your sins have covered his face that he will not hear you. He has blocked his ears. God can never hear the prayer of sinners. He said, for your hands are filled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Can you see it? Lie, lie. He said, when once you, except you repent from the sin of lies. He said, for your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue had muttered perversiveness. Those things are what can hinder your prayers from being answered. Tonight, are you ready to refrain? Are you ready to repent? There are people there. We want to go into serious prayers. And I want you there to open your mouth and say, Father, Father I, repent I repent from all my sins. Please have mercy on me and forgive me. Open your mouth for those of you who want to repent. Truly, truly. <laughs> Open your mouth and begin to pray this prayer. Tell God, I repent. Begin to pray that prayer. God, I repent from all my sins. I am not ready to go back to them. I am ready to turn. I am ready to for surrender all my sins. I don't want to go back. Lord, begin to tell God, I repent from those sins. Mention those sins as you know them. Begin to tell God, I, I am I, 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 just like David. I return to you and I will never go back to them. My Lord, my God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you are one of those that have said those that prayer, I want you to say this word after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight, as I've spoken, I've taken a stand. Jesus, come into my heart. Please take over my heart. Wherever I have sinned, and sinners dwell in me, I surrender myself to you. 
Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. So my Father, I come on behalf of all those who have made this declaration tonight. I beg for mercy. I ask, so Lord, as we go ahead, begin to remove, begin to restore, begin to cleanse, transform, and put them on their rightful position where they have missed it. Forgive them, O oh Lord, and restore us back. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, going back to Mount Zion, it said they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion. Now, let's examine the characteristics of this Mount Zion that the Lord is using to surround Jer Jerusalem, which the Lord is also using to surround his people. Let's look at this Mount Zion in Isaiah chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. Isaiah chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. It says, And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion <laughs> and upon her assemblies a cloud of smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night for upon all the glory shall be a defense. Mark those words. The Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion. And verse 6 it says, and they shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge and for a covert from storm and from sin, from rain. Amen? Amen. Now, when you look at that passage, it's talking about Mount Zion. Mount Zion can be described as a dwelling place where the children of God, it can be described as the church of God. And the church of God is not the building that we have there. The church of God can be said to be the called out, those who have been called out, the children of God, those who have repented. Then, if you are under this category of a child of God that has been called out, then you are under a serious divine covering of the great mountain of the Lord. So you are secured. So you don't have problem. All you need to do is to command and speak and it will come to pass. Amen? Amen. Now, how is God covering us? Looking at the verse, you just read, let's look at verse 5. It says, and the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion. Now, he creates upon your dwelling place a cloud of smoke. A cloud and smoke to protect you. And also he make a flame of fire at the night. Which is the time that the evil ones are at work. So, a cloud and smoke protects you in the daytime and then in the night. When the enemy, when you are asleep and the enemy will go about looking for whom to devour, the Bible says he will make a flame of fire. You remember the servant of God that woke up one day and the enemy has come surrounding him. And a servant came crying and said, Oh, my father, the enemy have surrounded us. The, my, the, the, he called, he said, Father, open his eyes. I pray, may the Lord open your eyes tonight for you to see the fire that is covering you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's pray this prayer and say, Father, father. open my spiritual eyes. Open my spiritual Let me begin eyes. to see the fire of God. That is covering and surrounding me. Begin to pray that prayer right away. Tell Father Lord I pass tonight. Daddy please let the, my eyes be open. Oh Lord that I will be trusting in you. That I will not be afraid. Of the enemy that comes. 
like a flood because you have said in your word you will raise a standard of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit himself is fire. Lord God Almighty, open my spiritual eyes. Let me begin to see. Let me begin to visualize the fire that is recovering us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, this protection is for everyone that trusts in the Lord, who are living in obedience to his word. If you trust in God, it means God has sent a cloud and a smoke. Wherever you, 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 you see, Anytime the, 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 the law enforcement agents, and I know, and, and also they are going out. You see, when you throw, uh, um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, when you throw um, a, the canister of, of, um, of no, no, of, uh, what do they call this? Thing? The canister of, of, uh, uh, of, of, uh, this thing that they're using protecting and and that it comes into your nose. I've forgotten the, the name. When you throw the canister of those things and it, it brings out smoke. It brings out smoke and it covers the, the, the environment to the extent that the people on the other side cannot see. Amen? Yeah. Especially in the military circle. When they want to rescue their people, they will throw a canister that will release smoke, that one will not explode. It will re release a very thick smoke to the extent that it will cover the enemy and the, 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 the other people can come and pick their people, they will not see them, while others are giving them covering fire. This is the kind of smoke that God has released uh, upon his people that will protect them. Open your mouth and say, Father, Father. release your divine covering of cloud release by day. And fire by night over me and my family. Open your mouth and begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Re release your divine covering of smoke by day, oh God, to cover me and in the night to protect me. Begin to pray, Father God, tonight I stand by your power and I decree every canister of smoke that you have released, let it cover me, let it protect me. In the mighty name of Jesus, Jehovah God protect us, O God, from every de 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 demonic attack. Lord, cover us as we move by day. And in the night when they come by their power, Lord, let the fire of God surround us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, the canister, what I was talking about is the canister of tear gas. Now, you see, when the canister of tear gas is released upon the those who are coming to destroy, you see the, the, the tear gas will be entering their eyes and they will be running away before they were coming with great strength, making noise. But the canister of tear gas will be released. And once it's released, the smoke will cover and they will be running away. Praise the name of the Lord. You are going to pray again and say, Father. This day, Lord, in every area that the enemy is coming upon me, release your canister of tear gas upon them. Open your mouth and begin to pray that their eyes will be blocked, that their nose will be sweating, will be bringing that water they cannot stand. Father, release it tonight. Release it today that none of them can come closer. And when once the canister of tear gas is released, None of them can come close. They can charge on you. But when the canister of tear gas is released, the the smoke of that tear gas will choke them. Let by the tears of the canister of tear gas, let it choke our enemies today. Let them go away in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You are going to pray the same prayer for your nation, the nation that you are. Do you know that when the, the nation, wherever you are, when that nation is not at peace, when the enemy decides to invade that nation, the enemy can be physical, it can be spiritual. When they come in the spirit realm, you attack them on the spirit realm. 
you are going to open your mouth and say, Father, Father release your canister of smoke and fire. Release your canister of smoke and fire. Let it cover our nation. Let it cover that the enemy will not be able to come close to us. Yes. Open your mouth and begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, release your canister. Let the smoke cover our nation. Let it protect our borders. Wherever the enemy is coming like a flood, Lord, you have promised that you will raise a standard of the Holy Spirit that is a fire. The Gesso Copro Zendele Cata, the Kepo Sintelebo, the Greto Sconta Ingrato. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Then let us look at why is God interested in covering you? Why does he actually want, why is he producing, creating this cloud in the daytime and then the fire to protect you? What is in you? Why is God interested in you? See, there is something that God sees in you before he decides to protect you. Now, let's take a, a scenario. Let's take this kind of, this example. Now, when you look at the rich and the poor, the rich people, when you go to their homes, mostly you will see them building high fence. With especially when they have properties, when they have valuable properties in their homes, they will put security men there. They will raise their fence so that the enemy cannot penetrate. But go to the house of the poor, that they don't have anything. They don't need, they don't need fence. They don't need protection. Because even if you enter there, you cannot see anything to take. Because it is nothing valuable. That is why God is raising a cloud, a pillar of cloud and fire to protect you. Because there is something very special in you that the enemy will want to take and God wants to protect it. And those things that God has seen in you, because God knows you are going to use it to the glory of God. That is why God is protecting you from the enemy that will take away all your blessings. Do you know that the blessing God has given to you is for God, for you to use to the glory of God? You see, when once you are detached from God, the covering is no more there. And the enemy will attack you like no man business. Let's look at that Isaiah chapter 4 verse 6. Isaiah chapter 4 verse 6. It says, and there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge and for a covert from storms and from rain. Here it talks about providing a tabernacle to cover you from the heat and from storms. Now, what does God read? Here represents heat here represents anything that takes away your comfort anything that takes away your joy anything that will not allow you to enjoy what God has given to you whatever represents heat in your life from today the Lord Almighty will take it away in the name of Jesus Amen. you are going to open your mouth and pray and say father let your, Let your protection be upon me as Mount Zion covers Jerusalem. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Let your protection be upon me, O God, right now as Mount Zion covers Jerusalem. Let your protection cover me. Let it surround me that every enemy that has been sent against me in any form, in any direction to take away the blessings, the goodness of God upon me. It can be pestilences. Jehovah God, please, I surrender myself for your covering, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You are going to pray another prayer and say, Father, Father, release your divine covering, your divine covering over, me over me against every heat against every called, heat pestilence called pestilence in my life, in my life and, my and my people and my nation. And my nation. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, release your divine covering over me 
against every heat. Release your divine covering over me, O God. Against every heat, against everything that is called pestilence, no matter what they are called. Release your divine heat over me, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I Father, thank you. Because Pray, 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 because today's prayer, you are going to begin to see an answer. You are going to begin to see. Let the protection of God be upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Masatatos in the Lego. Zendrebos can the Ingrado. Zente Kepuroko. Lisa Teka Papa Pareka Mosa. Then great topa. Lord Jehovah God. Release, release, release your divine coming in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let the power of the Lord come down. Let the power of the Lord come down. Let the power of the Lord from heaven above. Let the power of the Lord come. Let it come down. Let the power of the Lord come down. Let it come down. Let the power of the Lord come. Hallelujah. Let the power of the Lord from heaven come up. Let the power of the Lord come down. Open your mouth and say, Father, tonight, let your power come down. Let your power envelop me. Let your power cover me. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Release your power. Let your power Let your power let your power be released upon us today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Heat can represent an unpleasant weather. An unpleasant weather. When you look at Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. It says, While the earth remained, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. They shall not cease. Praise the name of the Lord. It means that no matter how you do it, trouble will be there. Problems will come. Heat that will make you uncomfortable will come. Bad weather will be there. It will remain. It is there. But the Lord said that he will cover us. He said, you, will put, you cannot run away from battle. As we said, the weapon of our warfare are not carnal. And God has given us all the armor in, to cover all our, protect us, our shield, our head, our chest, everything. But the back, there is no armor. Because God expects us to fight. Like we talked about storms last week, how the ego enjoy himself in the storms. So we as children of God expect that storm. It will come. But the good news is that the Bible says in Luke chapter 10 verse 19. In Luke chapter 10 verse 19. He said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Behold, God has released the power to us. And that is why you as a child of God, you as the one that confesses Christ, say anyone that confesses Christ should, can never sin. You should not go back to sin. When you commit sin, that is when the devil will have, you make an opening for him to come into your life. Lift up your voices and cry to God and say, Father, Father. whatever constitutes itself as an unpleasant weather in my life, 
Take it away in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. What are those things that constitute itself as an unpleasant weather? Tell God, Father, please take it away. I cannot withstand it because you have given me the power. I command it to leave me. I command it to go. Every heat, everything that is an unpleasant weather, in, form, in any form, Jehovah God, I stand by your power and I command them to go in the name of Jesus. It will not have effect on me because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You are fearfully and wonderfully created. No storms, no heat, no pestilence, no coronavirus can touch us wherever it touches us. Let it go. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. You can see here, it says, these things will remain. That is why you are seeing coronavirus come. People will be crying, God, why do you do it? It will surely come. It is for God to prove himself in the life of all his children. We are going to pray for all the children of God all over the world. The doctors, the nurses, the military, the, the, the law enforcement agents that are working in our different nations, that the Lord Almighty will raise a divine covering and protection over them. Let's begin to pray for all our people. Wherever they are, the doctors, the children of God all over the world. Father, we pray for all your children all over the world, wherever they are, that have been working, oh God, to, to really make sure this coronavirus does not spread. Father, we cover them. We cover your children, those that have even contacted the virus. We speak into their life, wherever they are. Those that have resumed work, Lord, that you cover them wherever they are. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are going to pray again. Now, in the nation where we are now, they have relaxed the lockdown a little bit for people to begin to move. And it is not over. As you begin to move, you need to still be careful. You need to still take care of yourself. And as you take care of yourself by covering, taking, using your nose marks, your hand gloves, washing your hands, you need to also call on the protection of God. You are, we are going to pray for all those who are resuming gradually. That as they go to work, the Lord will not allow any of them to contact that coronavirus. Let's begin to pray for them in the name of Jesus. Father, as your children are resuming work gradually, as they begin to interact with the people, Lord, we speak into every area of their life. As they begin to do their work, oh God, we beg for mercy and your covering. We beg for divine covering upon your children. Lord, as we begin to move into different homes, we pray for divine covering. Lord, none of us, none of your children will contact any satanic virus. Lord, if we get close to wherever they are, they immunity upon our body. We resist them, Lord. We were covered with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Father, as we go, oh Lord, the fire that radiates around us, that Mount Zion covers us, we will be covered and protected. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, Psalm 125 verse 3. Psalm 125 verse 3. He said, for the rod of the wicked... For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Brethren, we are going to pray a prayer. There are so many of the children of God today. The rod of the wicked is resting upon them. And this rod of the wicked is not their own doing. It must have happened maybe without their knowledge. Without their knowledge. And the devil has used this against them. It must have been as a result of the covenant that was made by their parents, by their forefathers, and it's affecting them. The Bible says the rod of the wicked cannot rest upon the loss of the righteous. See, see, see here, he's talking about righteous. That is, those who have decided to put their trust in him. Open your mouth and say, Father, 
every rod of wickedness upon my life, upon my family. Not Jehovah, take it away. Let it not work in my life. Pray and open the word and begin to pray this prayer. Pray this serious prayer. The ones you did not know, wherever the rod of wickedness has rested upon you and is operating in the areas you don't know, let that rod of wickedness not stand. Father, remove that rod of wickedness uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, I pray to that rod of wickedness uh, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Rod of wickedness can be witches and wizards, can be marine spirit. A lot of us, they are, we are passing through a serious power operating on, in our life. The power that working that we cannot help. But righteousness, when you live a righteous life, the Lord Almighty will fight your battle. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Talking of righteousness, let's look at Psalm 34. And let's see verse 15. Psalm 34 verse 15. He said, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. It's not only being upon the righteous, but the eyes of the Lord, he said, his ears are open unto their cry. Do you see the reason why you must live a righteous life? Do you see the reason why you must get be attached to God? Because God's eyes are upon you and he's waiting for you to cry. He's waiting for you to call. He's waiting for you to say, my God, help me. Just like blind Bartimaeus was sitting on the roadside all the time of his life. He never knew. Jesus is passing your way tonight. That is why we are here to pray. Blind Bartimaeus cried. He said, Jesus, thou son of David. You must have heard about this Jesus. Yes, blind Bartimaeus was blind. But he has been hearing about Jesus. Amy, he only heard, he never saw. But hearing, whatever you hear, will, will set you free. When you hear good news, when you hear something, and you, are, you, 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 you apply that thing in your life, it will definitely work for you. So tonight, you have heard that the righteous shall be delivered from all trouble. And the eyes of the Lord is upon the righteous and it, he, he listen to your cry. Open your mouth and say, Father, Father from, tonight, from tonight, I decree, I decree every walk of darkness, every, every, of every darkness, power walking against me, Father, deliver me. Because I've made up my mind to live a righteous life. Amen. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Amen. Say, Father, deliver me, set me free. Amen. Help me, O oh God. Amen. I have made up my mind to live a righteous life. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, when you look at 16, that's same Psalm 34, 16 and 17. Psalm 34, 16 and 17. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It says, The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think somebody is talking about network there. Mm -hmm. the, the, he said, The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. And the righteous cry, and the Lord hear it and deliver them out of their trouble, out of all their trouble. You can see the reason why we need to live a righteous life. Because God himself looks into the matter of the righteous. So you cannot deceive God. God knows those who are his. No matter what you do. If you pretend to be righteous, you are wasting your time. If you pretend to be holy, you are wasting your time. So you must be truthful because if you want God to really set you free, if you want God to really deliver you, please repent. You are going to pray this prayer and say, Father, Father every rod of the wicked of against, the my life, against my life and that of all that is attached to me. Oh God, let them not prosper in my life. Every rod of the wicked against me, my family, and anything that is attached to me, my, my brothers, my sisters, members of the church, Lord, let it not prosper. Let it not prosper in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that the rod of the wicked will not prosper in our life from today onward in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. See, the covenant that was lawfully made by your parents, by your forefathers, to protect you. Actually, they must have done this to protect you, not knowing what they were doing. God is going to reverse it tonight Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. See, the rod of the wicked can be an, that covenant that was made and is releasing wickedness upon your life. And see, there is a solution in Isaiah chapter 49. Isaiah chapter 49, 24 to 26. Isaiah 49, 24 to 26 says, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? 25 says, But thus said the Lord, Even the captive of the mighty shall be taken away. That is the lawful captive shall be taken away. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee. And I will save thy children. Open your mind and say, Father, Father everyone that is contending with me, every covenant contending with, me, with your power, Father, every covenant contending with my destiny, oh Lord Jehovah, rise up and contend with them. Father, let them be destroyed today. Anyone that is contending with your power in my life, anyone that is fighting for my soul, anyone that is fighting for my destiny, they want to take my destiny. They want to set me free from you. Jehovah God, arise tonight and deliver me, O God. Even the lawful captain, now I have decided to turn away and to follow you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Then Isaiah 49, verse 26. Isaiah 49, verse 26. It says, And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. Do you know that our God <coughs> is a God that can do wonderful things? And they shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. See, there are so many things that has taken place in our nations, in our homes. The oppression is damn too much. The enemy is rising up like a flood against you. You are going to pray and say, Father, Father everyone that is oppressing us, that is according us, to your word, let them begin to eat their flesh. Let them begin to drink their own blood. Open your mouth and begin to pray right now. Open your mouth and begin to pray, Father, in the break so tota katala zeto pro kon so to le gedesa reka pa parendo so to lisa reka pa ko izele koton ze ingreto mandeli se preti sataya ke ko kompro zindaya let them begin to eat their own flesh and drink their own blood thank you father thank you jesus in jesus mighty name we have prayed in Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Now, finally, Mount Zion is a mountain of holiness. Mount Zion is a mountain of holiness. See, none of you, your services, no matter how you do it, no matter how much you take to church, no matter how much offering you give, no matter how you sing to God, no matter how much you fast and pray, none of those services can help you, can deliver you, except you live a holy life. Pay attention to this final one. Holiness is the solution or is the answer to all the challenges and problems you are passing through in life. The Lord is ready because we have seen holiness is righteousness. We have seen it in Psalm 34 where he said the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and he listened to their cry. God cannot listen to the cry of the wicked, cannot listen to the cry of sinners. He said he listened to the cry of his children. Look at Obadiah chapter 1 verse 17. Obadiah chapter 1 verse 17. Obadiah has only one chapter anyway. Obadiah verse 17. He said, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. Oh, your deliverance has come today in the name of Jesus. Amen. I speak to somebody there that you have been suffering 
the business that you have been doing is not moving forward. Receive deliverance tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever that has been eating that eating deep into your finances, eating deep into your business, tonight the Lord will break their teeth in the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree that business will begin to boom again Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. He said, upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and they shall be holiness. Do you hear that? They shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. That means that as long as you live a holy life in upon this Mount Zion that you want to, to cover you, there is holiness. Holiness envelops you. So your garment must be a garment of holiness for God to be able to fight your battle. Because it is a mountain of holiness. That is why you are surrounded with holiness. Great is the Lord, Psalm 48, verse 1 and 2. Psalm 48, verse 1 and 2. He said, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Can you see that? Verse 2 said, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Praise the name of the Lord. So there is nothing you can do without the holiness of God in you. You must live holy if you want God to take over your battle. Exodus chapter 15 verse 11. Exodus chapter 15, verse 11. He said, Who is like unto thee, O Lord, amongst all the gods who is like thee? You are glorious in holiness. You are fearful in praises, doing wonders. Mark that word. Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises. When Jehoshaphat was overwhelmed by the enemies that came to deal with him, what did he do? He cried unto God. And he was very wise. He appointed singers. Many when we talk of people who are praising God, we are talking of both the, 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 the instrument that is worshiping God and praising God. God can never answer, no matter how good your voice are, your voices are, no matter how sweet those music are, as long as it's not coming from a holy vessel, God cannot answer. Let's not play, let's not just joke over this matter. Let's be very serious. I'm telling the truth. No matter how sweet your voice is, no matter how you praise God till tomorrow, people hear, God cannot answer except that vessel is holy. The Bible said in 1 Peter chapter, 5, chapter 1, 15 and 16. 1 Peter chapter 1, 15 and 16. He said, But as he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Praise the name of the Lord. Holiness is the solution. Holiness is the answer to every challenge that we face in life. Open your mouth and cry unto God and say, Father, Father cover me with the garment of holiness. Me and let me begin to perform wonders in my life. Cover me with the garment of holiness that everywhere I go, your protection will be upon me. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Say, Father, Lord, cover Lord, me with cover the garment of holiness. Garment of holiness. Cover, cover me with the garment of holiness. Me, oh Let me be covered with the garment of holiness from today in the name of Jesus. Oh God, oh Lord Jehovah God, help me, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Say, Father, please remove every rubbish in my life through the power of your holiness. Every rubbish, every dirtiness, every filthiness in my life, through the power of your holiness, Lord, remove it, oh God. Cleanse me. Remove that garment of filthiness away from me. Make me holy, Lord, because holiness is a great weapon that the enemy cannot withstand. Father, cover me with that holiness so that I will be able to fight and stand before the enemy. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Listen to what the word of God says in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. 
in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9. He said, because you love righteousness. Because you love righteousness. That is God's word. You love righteousness and you hate sin. So God will lift you above your failures. Do you know that where you are today, as long as you make up your mind to live a holy life, God is ready to lift you up above your failures. Brethren, you need to begin to live a holy life. Cry unto God finally for yourself. Say, Father, remove, I remove the garment of filthiness today. I remove the garment Please of put me the garment of holiness. I throw away every dirty garment. Lord, please cover me with your garment of holiness from today. I surrender myself, Lord, that I will be covered with the garment of holiness so that I will be able to stand tall. I will be able to stand above. I will be able to be the best. I will be able to receive my promotion. My business will begin to work. My destiny will begin to move forward. Jehovah God, remove that garment of filthiness from me. I am surrendering to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Finally, we want to pray this prayer for all our nations. Wherever you are, wherever you are is your nation. We are in the land of Jordan right now. It's our nation. We are going to pray because the situation we are now is a situation we need to cry unto God. We are going to commit the leaders, the, the, the law enforcement agencies, the medical personnel, and all those who are working in the forefront, the, 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 the Red Cross, and all of them that are working in the, in the forefront for, uh, concerning this coronavirus, we are going to ask God, protect them, give them wisdom, give them protection, divine covering. Let's begin to pray for all of them. Father Lord, we pray for all the agencies, uh, departments, uh, medical personnel, the presidents, the kings, uh, wherever they are, we pray for divine covering and divine protection over them, Lord, that they will be covered, Lord, as you will give them wisdom on what to do, Lord. I ask Father that arise and cover all of them, that none of them will contact this virus. At the end, the glory will be yours and the blessing will return to us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I want to pray for you right now. My Father, my God, I want to thank you because you are the most high. We have cried the way we feel is right. You said we should call. Even Jesus Christ himself took prayer seriously. He cried unto you. He sought your face and you answered him. Jesus prayed all night. Father God, that means prayer is important. This is the way we know how to pray. Jehovah God, I want to pray for all your children, wherever they are. Father, you know their faces and you know what they are passing through. Lord Jehovah, at the same time, you can answer all. Father God, for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, that suffered on the cross of Calvary, and because they are connected to this online, today, Lord, visit their different homes and sort out all their problems and hear all their prayers, that is that they will have testimonies in the name of Jesus. I pray for each and every one of them, Lord, wherever they are, those especially the businessmen, those who are working, Lord, those who are losing their lot, they have lost their job. Father, please have mercy and restore all what they have lost in the name of Jesus. Father, I'm praying tonight that many will have a testimony. Amen. There are so many things we cannot know and ask you for, but Lord, you know every heart. Visit them tonight and let them know that we have a God. Amen. Father, we pray for all our nations especially the land of Jordan where we are now, we pray, oh God, sanitize this land, cleanse this land from every virus. That virus have a name, and they gave it, gave it a name, COVID-19, Lord Jehovah, but the Jesus has been given a name above every other name that COVID-19 cannot fight and stand against that name. Father, we pray this night, Jehovah, let the power of Jesus, let the blood of Jesus overwhelm the power of COVID-19 in the name of Jesus. Lord, cover your children that this virus will leave our lands, our nations, wherever we are in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. 
in Jesus mighty name we pray Amen. God bless you all and I know your prayers will be answered the Lord will visit you very soon and you will have a testimony Paraventure, you have repented and you want to you want more counseling please send message to me on my messenger and I will definitely counsel and talk with you God bless you.